Blossoming Daughter for Monday, November 21st, 2022, 6.33 p.m. All members of the council are present with the exception of Mr. Bashaw, who is absent. Others include James Johnson, our clerk treasurer, and Laura Dogan, our city manager. The next item is to approve the minutes of November 7th, 2022. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion we approve the minutes of 7 November 22. Motion made by Mr. Wilson. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Mr. Charbonneau. Discussion on the minutes? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries. Thank you. The Third item is comments from members of the public. The first is Ann Shrillo, and it says water preliminaries. Yep. I am Ann Shrillo, I'm a resident of Newport, and um, I had a chance to read a letter that Laura Dolgan, your city manager, sent uh, to you today. Um, and and um, I noticed that there's supposedly a 25% shift from the um, city clerk's office to water. And I think before... Can I just cut you off? That's yeah. going to come up during the budget discussion. No, it, it, you yes, don't it talk will. about... You don't do the water budget in the... The water budget is not but even included. That will included. be discussed during his budget, that, that amount of money What I'm discussed. asking for... This is my two minutes. And what I'm asking for preliminarily is that a water budget be produced so you know what the effect on the water budget is and sub subsequently on the water rates uh, of shifting 25% uh, of that department's uh, labor to the water budget because we fought very hard to point out that uh, the, water, the water, water budget and the water rate should not go up and then, of course, if you shift all of that weight of, from the city budget to the water budget, you're going to have to raise rates. So it's really not fair. It will come up during the budget discussion. But you should know what the water budget looks like. We, you we, won't. It's not in there. We have a copy of the budget here. The, it's, the water budget's not in there. Okay. Well, we will have a copy. You'll have, and you'll make it available to us. The water budget. It's public information. It'll be available when it gets to be available. We are going line by line through the budget, and that's part of Mr. Johnson's proposed budget, is to move 25% of his time because it should be allocated that way. But I'm not going to talk about it now. That's a budget discussion that we're going to be discussing during the budget process. Yeah, I just want to make sure we see the water budget before a decision the public is made. Sees it before The public sees it. No. I'm sorry? Uh, the public does see the water budget. We always see it when we get it in the uh, annual report. All decisions have already been made by then. All right. Well, we need to see it sooner. All right. Thank you. The next is errors and omissions. Yeah. Um, there's not a whole lot of public comment on that. We have it on the agenda. There's a procedure that's to be followed. Um, oh, so I'm not sure what understand. you wish to discuss under public comment. It is an item that is an agenda item. We have strict procedures that we have to follow as a council, so I'm not quite sure um, when you said errors and omissions vote. The vote that this commission, the errors and omissions, is for the state form PVR 4261E. And we have a set procedure, and we follow it to the T. So I'm not quite sure. So can I sp speak? I thought it was my comment. Well, but if it's... No, if, no, 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 I, no, if you're going to present stuff... That's not relevant okay. to this whole process. I, I can't I, even get a word in. Well, I'm You're just... You're not even letting me get a word well, in. I'm, I'm just, just stating the facts. Okay, that, and okay. let me state the facts. Okay, no. I'm going to let you state very briefly what it is your concern is, but I'm not going to have this turn into a hearing on stuff that we're not even supposed to discuss. That's not going to be allowed at this table this evening. So Mr. Manette, you Mr. Manette. I am trying to speak, and you are shutting me down completely. And the public has a right to make a comment and have their voice heard. And I would hope, as our mayor, that you would respect that. Well, when I, we have agenda items, and that's all I was getting at. And, so, and, I know I, that, and I know from correspondence and emails, 
You wish to present other stuff. I got that from reading your emails, and that's not what we're here for. So I'm just going to let you make your two-minute comment, and that's it. My two-minute comment is that I am requesting that the vote be tabled. That is my request. Because I do not believe that the amount is accurate. I have public, uh, public document requests out that have not been completed yet. I believe there is an additional clerical error, and I do not want this amount approved if it is the re if it's not accurate as the result of a clerical error. So I'm asking the board to please table the vote on the 174 Fernwood Circle errors and omissions. That's what I'm asking. Oh, we will consider. The city is in violation of a public documents request right now. And until I have the public documents, I cannot determine if there is a clerical error or not. I would hope that the city would, hope, would, would have interest in voting on something with appropriate integrity of the matter of which they're voting. And I don't believe that it is accurate. So if you push the vote through, I believe that you are going to be pushing a vote through on an inaccurate errors and omissions amount. I don't believe, well, we'll discuss it. We have information, we will discuss it. We'll move on. Under the errors and omissions, we have two of them this evening. And this is the information provided by the assessor. And the first one is for parcel number 112006.001, parcel number 112006.002. And this is from the assessor. I'll just make sure here. Yep. Okay, it says due to an error in merging the above listed parcels, I am requesting the City Council to void the 2022 tax bill generated for parcel number 1112006.002. The merger was processed by my office and notification was sent to the landowner on 12-27-2021. I failed to inactivate parcel number 1120006.002 from the grand list, causing the system to generate a tax bill for an inactive parcel. No adjustment is needed for parcel number 112006.001 because the combined value was adjusted for that parcel. The merger of the parcel number 1120006.002 results in a 31,600 decrease in the grand list. And the council did receive information on the <coughs> list of cards. This is property located, <coughs> let me see here, I gotta read the list of cards. Birch Hollow. Do we have questions on this? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the first one. Do we wish to vote on these separately? I would like that. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> and this is to correct the form, as I said, PBR 4261E for the state of Vermont. Since the grand list has already been um, published to the state and we've all received tax bills. So what is the council's wishes on this one? This is for the property um, owners, Laura Fernandez and Craig Hansen. Mr. Mayor, so basically I think what Rob is saying, he merged the two parcels, they forgot to take the 021 out to a generator tax bill. But the value on the 01 includes both properties. properties. So we're billing, her, billing them twice, twice. basically for one piece. Right. She just needed 
to uh, avoid the old two. So the two properties are 61 and 33 Birch Hollow? They're combined. They're combined. They're combined. They're combined. So Do you want a motion? On that one, yes, please. I make a motion um, that we follow the assessor's request for valuation change on the 2022 grand list. Uh, there was an admission request regarding parcel 112006.001. One one two zero zero six point zero zero two. Motion made by Mr. Charbonneau. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Pedersen. Discussion. And all those in favor of that aye. motion say aye. 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 Opposed. Ayes <laughs> have it. Motion carries. The second one. Is the assessor's request for valuation change on. 2022 grand list for parcel number 113057, 113053. It's parcel number 113157, not 057. And parcel number 113053. Due to the error, once in merging the above listed parcels, I am requesting the City Council to void the 2022 tax bill generated for parcel number 113157. The merger was processed by my office in 2021 for the 2021 tax bill. I miscalculated the acreage to be 0.84 acres, not the correct 0.54 acres in the merger process, resulting in a $6,000 reduction in value on the grand list, causing the system to generate an incorrect tax bill. The homestead value was incorrect on the merged parcel and has been corrected. The merged parcels will be assessed at 150,100 with 100% homestead resulting in a $6,000 decrease to the grand list, and that's from the assessor. Mr. Johnson, is it once again, two parcels of land mm -hmm. were not merged? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he just miscalculated the uh, acreage on it, so it calculated the wrong tax bill. He's corrected in his system, he didn't get into the one downstairs, so he's corrected the acreage to 0.154, like it says, there's a six thousand dollar reduction instead of one hundred fifty-six thousand for the Can I ask two a question? Just a minute, I'm speaking. Okay. And the the uh, correct value is now one hundred fifty thousand one hundred. I'm just going by what oh, Bob's ahead. told. Oh, okay. I just um. So again, I just want to be, want to be absolutely clear that we're talking about errors in emissions, and the error in emissions has been corrected. We're not talking about assessed value. We're talking about errors and omissions that has been corrected. Correct. There's another process for the assessed value. Okay, the assessed value is a whole different thing. And that's a, not, that's Board of Civil Authority and if there's a problem with that or if there's a disagreement on an assessed value that gets grieved and goes to the Board of Civil Authority, am I correct? Or the assessor, then the Board well, of Civil Authority. But it's separate. I think basically he's correcting an error made on the yeah. acreage yeah. at this point. If there's a discrepancy, and the assessed value, there's a grievance process. Yeah. And, I, yeah. and again, I just want to be absolutely to clear for my sake because it right. seems like there's a multiple different issues here. And yeah. the one that the council is concerned with is the correction of the errors in admission. Correct. Okay. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Johnson, maybe you would be able to shed some light on this. When they do mergers for tax purposes, 
it's my understanding, based on a conversation with another city clerk in a different town, or not a city clerk, but a town assessor in a different town, that when the, the parcels are merged, that it's not supposed to show up as an independent house lot and your house site any longer. That's the purpose of merging them. And I do not believe that Mr. Naramore has entered the merger into the vision system or whatever it is correctly. And part of the reason I feel this way is because when the lot was sold to us by my neighbor at 192 Fernwood Circle, her valuation only went down by 3,300. And when it was added to our house site, it was added in at 22,000. And I remember in a conversation with Mr. Naramore, he said, oh, well, I just deactivate the lot because it makes it a lot easier for me if you guys ever decide to sell it. I don't have to go through all the, the, the steps of, of backing it out again. And I strongly suspect that in the process of him believing that he's found an easier way to handle it, he's entering it in the computer with an in inappropriate code, causing it to still show up on the tax bill as a separate house lot. And I've requested the Lister's card for 192 Fernwood Circle. He sent something today which is very different than what he's been sending me for my Lister's cards because I was trying to determine what the code was that was associated with the entry of the merger um, because I can't get a straight answer from him. So I don't think that the mechanics of entering the merger into the computer system are accurate. It does not make sense that the seller would only experience a decrease of 3,300, whereas the buyer experiences an increase of 22,000. I think there is a clerical error. Do you have any insight into this? Uh, I can tell you I'm not familiar with the codes in the assessing department. Okay. But I think he merged the property. It may have been incorrect on the first tax bill, the 21 tax bill. I think he's got it correct in the system now as far as the error is. No. I, you're, you're talking about a grievance, and that is not what you're dealing with here. But, but I'm not talking about a grievance if it's a simple clerical error. That's my point, and that's why I'm asking the board to table the vote until we can get the documents, talk to the vision software person, and figure out whether or not it was improperly entered into the system. Because if it was improperly entered into the system, the errors and emissions amount is going to be a different amount than what you're, what's before you for a vote tonight, and there will be no need for a grievance. So I'm just asking for this to get tabled until I can get the documentation and have further conversations. I understand what you're saying, but I think if it involves a change in the value of the property, that's a grievance issue. No, because Mr. Naramore said to me, I said to him, I don't think you have this entered into the system correctly. This is not making sense. And he said, no, 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 the system just does all the calculations for me. And the city clerk, at not the city clerk, but the, the town assessor in the other town said he does not have it entered in correctly. It should be entered as residual land. He has it entered in as a house site. And so that is just a clerical error. And it's not, it's not grievance material. I'm not an assessor, but I think if he's merging the property, that, that second lot becomes part of the house site now. But it's not. He has it as a separate house lot on the tax bill. That's the problem. what I think. I don't know what he was thinking. I understand. So can I interrupt? Can I, can I just say something? I'm not the original tax bill. No. You haven't got a new tax bill. What I'm saying is he sent me the Lister card to, sh to reflect the changes, and it's still showing on my Lister card as a separate house lot. And that's what I'm trying to get through, is that it should not be. It should be just part of my land holding with my homestead. And this is why I'm asking for the board to please table this vote tonight. Mr. Mayor. Just a second. I'm looking at this list. I don't know what this is.
this has anything to do with it or not, but I don't claim to know anything about the assessors, but when I was uh, active zoning administrator, when certain lots were merged, in order for them to be considered part and partial as one, then a full engineering and a new plat had to be generated to make it in one lot as far as, from what I'm understanding, you're trying to describe. Whereas other people have merged it, leaving the lot intact, mm -hmm. so that if they ever wanted to subdivide it again, then they didn't have to go through and do a subdivision in another whole set of engineering drawings. And, and I hear what you're saying. Um, the difficulty that we have going on is that for tax purchases, you don't have to do what you're saying. Correct. Okay, and, and you can merge them for tax purposes. Correct. And they don't show up well, on the vision that I believe it will still stay in vision as a separate And so my neighbor has identical land holdings to me. It's his job. Identical. And she has a land valuation of her house, a lot with her house on it, and a buddy lot behind her at Forty-one eight, and they're putting us in at fifty-eight thousand. And so what I say is, there's a chicken's entry incorrectly, and the town, the town assessor, no and the other town told me that the reason is because it's still entered as a separate house. Because this hospital. doesn't have to be filed till December thirty-first. December thirty-first. Yeah. So, so we can delay it. You can delay it to the next meeting. I thought it had to be done, so it can be delayed. It can be delayed. No, I think you got to file between. January 31st and right. January 15th. So there's two more meetings this year, and that way we can get uh, clarity that uh, Ms. Bajerling is requesting. Rob can respond to whatever is outstanding, but I don't think there's any harm in delaying this to the next meeting, and that way we don't have to make any decisions under undue duress. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Goldberg. I just think, uh, for the record, it's pretty poor that the assessor could not be here tonight. That's just, I want that to be on the record that here we are as a council. We're not assessors, and the assessor is not here tonight. And well, I'm not happy about that. I I'm not I, happy. And so we'll go on. Um, we'll, we need a motion to table this. this I'll make a motion. Mm -hmm. I don't like being left hung out to dry. We table this for the next meeting and, and hope that our assessor is here to respond to 5 December, that's our next meeting. After that, we'll, we'll have to act and on what we have. And just for the record too, if it's anything dealing with the assessed value, there is a procedure. I understand. You know, I if, know, if, I know. If, after, I understand. if after he enters the code, it's still the 22,000, and, and you're not happy with that, no, there's I a understand. whole procedure for that. And I do understand that, Mr. Manette, but what I'm here to say is that I think it's a very simple clerical error. Well, you know, but in order to, to make that determination, we need some additional information, which he has not been forthright providing. So I made a motion to table it to 5 December, and it best be corrected by then. Yes. Yeah. Motion been made to table this to December 5th. Right. Um. Yeah, well, we have to get to see if there is a clerical error. Right, because right. who yeah. knows if there is. Well, right. we're just tabling it. Right, but his motion included to correct it. Oh. Yeah. Let's move, let's move the table. Just move the table. All right, we'll table it 5 December then. Okay. What's the date of the next meeting? 5 December. Okay. And if it's possible, I mean, to have this discussion with the assessor and sort this out. Um, that might be helpful, I don't know, but. Uh, you can look that up. Those are my attempts. Okay. I don't know who else wants a copy, but these have been my attempts to do just that. Okay, thank you, guys. You're welcome. Hi, hey, we need a second for that. We need a second. I'll second. Second. Discussion. Discussion. And then all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's tabled. Thank you very much. The item number five we don't need because there's no one stepped forward. On the, oh. I'm sorry, can I just backtrack to what we just did? I don't want to change anything, but 
I do think it would be helpful in the whole of this discussion about the, the, the past practices of not separate, not merging the properties into one lot as opposed to, because I know that sometimes they're left separately. Um, people may merge them, but the parcels remain the same. It's like one tax bill, but the parcels remain separate. For I think that reason, in case they want to get separated again or something. But anyway, that clarification may be useful too, just for background information. Okay. And, and so, may I respond? Sure. So, I, I can't. I can't say um, that. He can say well, that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I'll go ahead. I'm in the I process just, of trying to do just that, okay. and I need my neighbors listed card to do that. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm I'm working on it. All right. I'm not trying to be unreasonable here. There's just a huge. You know what I'm saying? It it it, it, it defies logic that one person loses 3,300 and the next person who buys the lot gets 22,000 tacked on. Okay. It, it does not make any sense. Nope. So we're, we're going to get to the bottom. There could be a reasoning for part of that too is with what you paid for the lot, fair right. market value. Right. But I'm, that's, that's getting into the whole no, assessed that's value. That's not to do that. But <laughs> I'm just saying, I just thought of it sitting here. It could be based upon what you paid for that lot of what it's assessed at. Because no, you can, you can laugh all you want. When, with real estate and the way things are, Assessed values are based upon fair market value. It just clicked into my mind because you purchased it. That might be part of it too. It may not just be a clerical. Just so have that in the back of your minds also that it could be what you paid for your neighbor's law. If the city is doing that, Mr. Manette, they have a much bigger problem than Jennifer Bureau. Because then you're taxing people in a very un inequitable fashion because somebody who owns a quarter acre and has it valued at 5000 and somebody else who has a quarter acre and has it valued at 30000 I mean... I can tell you that happens, and that is actually held up because we went through a whole reappraisal, and I can tell you my little lot on my street is worth a lot more than lots that are three times the size on the main road. And there's a but, whole factor. I don't want to argue it now, but I'm just saying that could play into it. And, and just to, no, I, I'm, I'm going to stop the discussion, but I just want to let you know. And then the only other thing is the second, if you have an issue with public records requests and the city, there's a procedure with the Secretary of State that you can do. Actually, you know, it's with the Superior Court. And I've been tempted to, to draw. Oh, you go. Go I for it. I'd say just go for it. I'd just say go for it because accusations after accusations. If you truly believe we've done something, go for it, and that's what I'm going to end that conversation. Okay. Through the gauntlet in the ring. <laughs> the next item is number five. No one has stepped forward. Normally, uh, so we can just uh, ignore number five. You're covered. That's the important thing is that you're covered. But covered and according to the NVDA bylaws, you don't have to do anything until March. Exactly. So it's okay. It's okay. It'll be for the next folks. Yep. Right. Okay, the next item is present Newport City operational budget um, and set the schedule. Do you wish to start presenting the budget tonight? Um, I think we got time. We could start it. That is entirely up to you. I mean, it was warned present operational budget so it's a warned item that will certainly speed things up on it normally i put the budget on the screen and share it so i can try to share it because i'd here. like to get right into it if okay. we can it's only seven o'clock and it was a properly warned item okay let me see what i can do uh, before you start that can i point out that the budget did not appear um, until this morning, that's when um, the citizens of Newport get it. Lots of people work from eight to five, and they would not have a chance to even look at it, to come in and um, say something intelligent about what the budget is. Mm -hmm. And said, it sounded as if when you said you were going to present it instead of schedule, a set of schedule means for the future, not for tonight. I'm just saying it's. It, but it's it says fair. present Newport City operational budget. Yes, and set a schedule. And set a schedule. It's two the terms. Schedule for in, what? <laughs> for future budget review. It's well. It's yeah. we need the semantics. I think we can start presenting the budget. It was a properly warned item. It was posted on the website this morning. 
How can and, you read a whole budget and get ready to? At, at because we're going to we're going it? section by section, and yeah, not, but they may not have read that section. Well, I'm not going to argue with everybody tonight. This is a warned item. We can start the budget tonight. That's the way I look I, at I, it. I would have to say I don't believe it's fairly warned, and the reason Present is present Newport City operational budget. That is a agenda item. It is warned. And then it also said set review schedule. It's two items in one sentence. Right. And so are you spontaneously setting that review schedule now? We will set a schedule tonight also. You but can, if you can, you're setting a schedule. I'm not going to argue. Let's just get going with this and get started. But, you know. So I would like to say for the record this is not properly warned. It is properly warned. So we disagree. Mm -hmm. I still think I can... I. No, I'm not going to say it. I was told to bite my tongue at certain times, and I better. I just wonder if this is being successfully shared. And let's see. Oh, it might be. Revenue. Start with the recap page. A little different this year. We were sharing it on the big screen and uh, for folks at home. Well, um, we usually start at the very beginning and looking at the recap page as I put in the opening paragraph. And all of this is online, by the way. Uh, it's posted in a PDF in the calendar and then it's posted at the uh, bottom of the website under recent news, fresh today. And if we make any changes on these and we make the changes on the spreadsheet, it'll update within five minutes. So there's that. So one of the things I want to stress in this budget is that it is an increase of $108,448.15 over 21-22's budget, which translates into a 2.56% increase. Uh, the total amount to be raised by taxpayer dollars is $4,341,422. One of the challenges that we had this year is absorbing a 21% increase in medical insurance, a 9.7% uh, increase in the ambulance service, who are also facing the same challenges, unknowns around the price of fuel, and we're anticipating an 8% increase in electricity. Uh, given what the latest newsletter had indicated from Vermont Electric. Uh, we've <coughs> upped the amount of zoning administrator hours from 24 to 32 uh, at the request of the Planning Commission and also to keep pace with development demands and the zoning bylaw modernization project, which is pretty consuming. Um, it was pointed out that 25% of salaries were shifted over into the enterprise funds. And the challenges that we're having with post, the post-pandemic climate. A lot of other businesses are dealing with the same types of challenges in recruitment and retention. Council uh, had the foresight to uh, include a 7% one-time cost of living for non-union employees. And with minimum wage going up 63 cents, uh, we've made those adjustments into this budget. 
to keep Newport, the city of Newport, a desirable place to work. Um, a 3% increase will translate to an $18,000 expense. Uh, we do recognize that there's two contract negotiations presently underway. So we have been as conservative as we feel that we can be under those circumstances. I don't know when those are going to be finalized. Um, so we want to make sure we've got some conservative estimates so nobody is left surprised at the end of those negotiations. As far as our revenues go, we um, had a, a good year for the Recreation Department, bringing in more than we anticipated. And we attribute that to the drastic facility improvements that have been underway over the past year and a half between the Recreation Department and the Public Works Department. And want to point out that our state payment in lieu of taxes, this year it was over $600,000. So we've put in a conservative estimate, estimating 580,000. So we don't want to get too overconfident, but at the same time, we prefer to have it be a little more realistic. And of course, I'm the delinquent tax collector as well as the person that's putting the budget together with our department heads and with our program administrator and with Jim. So we want to be very respectful about what we're asking from the taxpayers. Uh, it's not an easy thing to do. We recognize that this affects every taxpayer from all walk of life. Uh, we were relieved to see that the federal government has also increased their payments to people who are on Social Security and other federal payments. We're also relieved to see that Medicare uh, is anticipated to be decreased 4% so with all of those complexities, we are bringing forward this budget and we might as well get started. So the recap page basically takes every other page. I'm gonna just walk over here. The recap page takes every other page that's at the bottom of the screen where you can see general revenue administration Police Department, Fire Department, there's Public Works in there, Recreation and other, and it uh, synopsizes it on this particular page, both the revenue and the expenses, and that's how we get these numbers. From there, and again, I don't know if anybody has any questions on that, all of these numbers are derived from these pages that are behind it. So if you look at the general revenue, I want to point out where we put the 580000 which is right here, payment in lieu of taxes. We've always anticipated 460000 as you can see, for the past several years, because that was the amount that was brought in in 2022. But moving forward, last year, we got 533000 and this year, I think within the past week or two, Jim, if I'm not mistaken, we got a check for 603000 and that's why we felt comfortable bringing that up to 580000 So with that, all of these numbers are based on the revenue that has been received over the past three years. And the higher we can get that, the more advantageous, but we're very conservative. We don't want to over-anticipate because that does a disservice in the long run. Of course, payment in lieu of taxes is all contingent upon what the state approves. Nothing is guaranteed. Correct. Right? That's what I'm saying. Because yeah. there were times where the legislature wanted to cut it way, way back. And it's all contingent upon what the state does in their budget. Yeah. And I can remember being down there fighting for it. Or not for the higher. With some other, with another mayor fighting to keep it up there. And so it is all contingent upon what the state legislature does. Let me just move this back up. Any other comments on 
pockets or anything on that particular page. Actually, in this, just in your memo to us um, about the zoning administrator position, mm -hmm. just as I don't, I don't expect any answer tonight. Just prepping for when that comes up and when we review the budget. Um, I would like more than just a generic statement. I realize this is just an overview. Um, so, uh, uh, some detail on what the increase in development demands are. Okay. Okay, and. Um, a little more detail about the modernization project. I know that we've had, that we had to do that. We hired a consultant to work with it. And so what are the demands on the um, zoning administrator since there's a consultant and those sorts of things. So what are the, what is the actual demand on the zoning administrator? I can tell you that um, he's spending quite a bit of time dealing with uh, people who are coming in for inquiries about mm -hmm. zoning. I think the development piece is increasing in the city. Um, so, like, what, what's the what's the demand, the increase from you know last year, the year before, to now? I'll see is it. it temporary because we're just in a real hot real estate market, or is it well, something that we think is going to be permanent? That sort of thing. Just a little more. I don't know information around it. Okay. That's all. That's why I'm asking now, not okay. when, not when we well, actually look at that in the budget. Well, you're actually going to be looking at it tonight. <laughs> oh, so we can page. come back. We can yeah. certainly come back and make a presentation about yeah. that. Yeah, I think it needs to be justified versus like what you're saying, just the one little sentence. And I understand that you know that this is mm -hmm. just a. Mr. Mayor, are there more hard copies because it's really hard to follow along when it just sort of goes by that quickly and you jump around? I can probably go publish some if you don't mind. Print some. Just take yeah. a minute. We're starting tonight. We'll do each department um, and go through that. Each department. Probably the next council meeting we're going to do. I'm not sure what we'll do next meeting, but we'll go through the entire budget over the next two or three meetings. And I'm going to do like what I did last year. I'm going to let the department heads present the budget, let the council ask their detailed questions and like I did last year I did open it up to the public um, to allow the public to have some questions after each after each um, yeah department head that's what I did last year after mm -hmm. I want to give the department head the courtesy to present their budget I want to give the department heads the courtesy of letting the council and give the council the courtesy because of asking their questions and making comments and then I'd open it up to the public after that for each department. I, I'm doing it like what I did last year. Uh, Ms. Mayor, if you, if you would like, I can I can probably answer some of your questions involved with the, no. the increase in zoning. Not No, I'd rather have it from the city manager and the zoning administrator himself.
while we have a break, could somebody just uh, explain what pilot hospital number two is? Uh, payment. It's the payment in lieu of taxes. Payment in lieu of taxes from the hospital. They make a payment every year in lieu of taxes. Thank you. It started when the medical arts building was taxable at one time and then it became part of the hospital. So it's been that way for, what, 40 years at least? 30 years? Because that medical well, arts building was back in the 70s. Right. And when the doctors joined with the hospital, it became part of the, the hospital. hospital. And then it moved out of that because of all the physicians moved out of the Correct. And it became administrative, and so it went back. Right. Yeah. And then Montero was on, remember, it was 30, and they cut it to 20. More? And said, here's what we're going to fix our budget. Through general revenue, is there anything else? Do you want to go into administration now? Anybody have any questions on the general revenue council? No. City Council salaries. I think that adds an additional ten dollars to your stipend per meeting. Everything else is the same. Realize that we use council spe special projects for things like uh, if somebody passes away, who's been associated with the city for a long time, we'll send them flowers. If someone's not doing well, we generally take things out of that particular line item. Gift certificates for people who are very ill and so forth. City manager's office, this includes our program's administrator. I go back to council, you actually have to have workers comp on us. I believe anything that has a check of that nature, it would be in there. I know it's not much, but I just thought it was strange that, yeah. that you even have anything in there, workers comp. Yeah. I think you guys get a regular paycheck, isn't yeah, that? Get, yeah, you get Social Security, the whole rest of it. Yeah. That's yeah. truck coming in. Okay. I'm not used to having my back to you when I talk about this, so forgive me. Uh, city manager's office. And you'll note the increase in the salaries, which you'll see that across the board for all of the, um, anything that has to do with salaries, vacation, it's all attributed equally. So, again, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, no, on salaries. Explain again. This reflects the extra... 7%. On top of... So last year, uh, before... Last year when we were putting the budget together, there was a 3%. Correct. Okay, that was already planned. The 7% was unplanned. Right, so that made it... So going into this current fiscal year, that was 10%. It's still 7% for the COLA rule. And then... Uh, but I'm doing total math. And, and then this budget reflects another 3%. This reflects a 3% uh, on, on t starting July 1st. 3%. Correct. Another... But this... But this current budget that we're in this fiscal year, there was a 3%. There was a 3%. In this current budget. Yeah. The, there was 7% added. In May. In May. So 
the 3% in this budget was figured with the complete 10% that was, we in theory, received in the prior budget. So the budget this year is reflecting a 3% on top of the 10%. 7%. Mm -hmm. seven, seven well, 7%. Percent. It's a, right. a 7 so you had... 7% was unclaimed when we put the budget together the year before. So you've got... So the 7% was the cost of living that came forward in May. So what I'm, no, what I'm trying to come up with is you had 3, you got to 7, and then you had 3 in this budget, mm -hmm. the current fiscal year. So in my mind, that's 13%. And now we're doing in the next year, year one, another 3%. Next, so, year, next year we put in 3%. Correct. That's what I'm saying. So in reality, in two years, it's a 16% increase, if I'm doing the math correctly. And well, this in my theory of thinking. It actually is going to be slightly more than that because. Well, let me. I, I, let, let, me, let, me yeah. let me. I'm the one. Let me. Okay, I'm just putting it in my mind. I'm taking notes to myself because it might be a sticking point for me. Okay, we can go on. Uh, I think you'll see the, across the spectrum in each department, you're going to see double digits for your health insurance. There again, on health insurance, double digit. We pay 100% for two persons. The bulk of it is 100% for one person plan. But two persons, department heads get 100%. 11, uh, 12 people? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that okay. Was, I'm just thinking think, and making notes because these are some of the I have some concerns, but I'm just making some notes and clearing it up. Shall we move on to yes. the next category? Delinquent tax collection. No change there. The election expense. That fluctuates depending upon how many elections you have in a given year. There will only be one next year, right? Hopefully. There will only be one election, I would think. Oh, no, you never know. You never know. Okay. There's your city clerk and treasurer, or city clerk, excuse me, city treasurer salaries. And you see the decrease, whoops, that I spoke about. Let me just hop on and see what happened. Mr. Mayor, may I ask a question? Is the public allowed to ask a question? Not till the end. Not till the end of what she's presenting. Let me just ask Chris to mute his phone or maybe I'm Can you hear me? Questions, please let me know. Where to start. We're on treasurer. Yep, that's our name right now. The city treasurer. Once again, as brought up before, it's the allocation of time being put to where it should be. You can explain. Well, the reason I got 25% will go by water and sewer because we're not just collecting money. We bill four times a year. Okay, we're answering phone calls on the water and sewer every day of the week. Tom can attest to that. Somebody's in there quite often on water and sewer. And I would say other than taxes, and water and sewer may have spent more time than taxes, come to think of it, because we're doing it four times a year. And uh, I think 25% moved over to where it should be. Is, in my estimation, probably should be a little bit more, but we settle on the 25%. 
It's not, not, it's not once a year deal. It's four times a year we're building that, collecting money, answering questions every day of the week. Anybody's got a sewer problem, they call us. We transfer it to Tom, but they call us. And Tom doesn't say take care of it, go out there, Jim? Well, some things we can't take care of, we can do it. <laughs> and that's why. I mean, it's. I mean, everything. Water and sewer and taxes and the elections probably the three biggest things that we're dealing with. We do our every day. And recording. Anything else on that section? Should I keep going? I keep going to the end of the admin. All right. Well, it, uh, as you know, we've been using um, KBS for a long time. We've served us very well. The amount you see for the actuals are their, their actual invoices. Tax listing. Assessor. Retirement, 53% increase. On to city clerk. You're not the same. The salary is the same thing in the clerk's office. I think, I, I don't know, unless you have any questions in particular for the city clerk's office. Questions? Uh, corporate counsel, we leave at 15,000. Realize that we've got two million negotiations and those are um, booked. For example, all the um, attorney's fees go to the police department and all the um, attorney's fees for the public works go to the public works department. So we don't overspend this line item. And there's your planning and zoning, which we'll get back to you on the details for the salaries. Mm -hmm. Everything else sort of corresponds. So again, I don't know if you have any particular questions that haven't been addressed yet. Let me know, please. Municipal building, again, that's a uh, salary for our custodian, which is also a, a member of the union. And if you go down there, I think you'll see, I think one of the biggest expenses there is fuel, repair and maintenance for this building. Any questions on total municipal building? On the propane, only a hundred dollars. What what uses propane? It's right under the fuel oil. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, uh, Kevin, that's for the uh, generator. Oh, okay. So I'm running, you know, scheduled to run once a week for, for the hour. Oh, okay. I was just wondering, it seemed like very small amount. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And for the fuel oil, do you think that was budgeted enough? Well. <laughs> Yeah, that's a really good question. I wish I could tell you. I think you're going to see that across all the fuels and propanes in each department. But again, that's what I mean about an educated and conservative budget. We've tried to overestimate in those areas. 
we, we pre-buy. We haven't even but, gotten the offer to pre-buy yet. There was no pre-buy for this window. That's right. They didn't offer it this year, right? I, I haven't heard from anybody yet. So because it's again, so volatile. Good prices. Why you pay so much? They don't get them. Because we're a municipality? No, we've had pre buys before. Okay. We've, had a, we've had a pre buy every year. Yeah. This yes. is the first year we haven't. I'm just sure. wondering if the difference is because, because I mean, I pre bought. And so did you pre bought? Yeah. I didn't. You bought? I did. strange that we didn't get it. So it must yeah. be because of the I have been told on, 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 But on the fuel for the municipal building. Yeah. 2122 actual is 16,600. So for 23, 24, we're only asking for $300 more. That, that sure doesn't fit with every house out there. We all got zinged. Well, take a look at the number, of the percent change, 41% mm -hmm. difference. So we kind of get nervous. Yeah, but <laughs> that 22, 23 budget. Yeah. And we dropped it 4,000. Now you're only asking for a thousand back, and price of fuel is almost double. Or if you call it fuel deal, it's just doubled. Yep. You want us to make a change on that one? Unless we make friends with the Saudis and suddenly the price drops down again. But That's not happening. It's volatile and it can go, you know, there's a lot of global issues going on that are affecting who knows how long it'll last. Well, let me make a note yeah. on that, and okay. we'll we'll come back as we go through this. To me, it's not realistic at all. Yeah. Yeah. What what do you think we should put in there? Like, give me a ballpark. <laughs> yeah. How much how much gallons are we talking about per year? Ballpark, roughly. Mm, I think it's for that particular. We buy it in bulk. Uh, we usually spend around sixty thousand. Let me. Do, can you give me a minute, and I'll go get last year's folder. Give me a second. Okay. Two fifty to four four and a quarter on three lot. Mm -hmm. Is that what? That's for seven bucks. Big bag. Very good. This no, is almost double. You should think we did buy a wood chip. So Especially if you go by the, the actual mm -hmm. one. The actual one for it doesn't yeah. heat with wood chips. Not that we want to add chip to it, but we have realism. We don't heat with wood anymore. We used to. I know it's a state office heats with wood, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was built that way. It was built that way, yeah. And it's no. fluctuates no. incredibly. No. It's a big building, so. I think the hospital heats with wood chips. They do. Yeah. Uh, they do. I think they do, yeah. Yep. And they, they were built that way. They had, we, we. The hospital, that was put in. It was, but it was retrofitted and it fit, they had place to, room to do it. Right. We don't have room right. here to do it. Yeah. And on this one here. So our pre-buy, yep. our pre-buy last year for number two fuel was 24,000 gallons, but again, that's bulk. That includes all of our facilities. And yeah. the price per gallon last year was $2.49. For, for propane, propane, we bought 16,000 gallons at $1.75. That was a total of 28,000. 28,000 for the uh, propane and $59,976 for the 24,000 gallons of number two fuel. That was a free buy. You sure you had $2 double. a gallon. Double, double it. I mean, you could easily double that. Yeah. And still be short money. 
So is that, you want me to go significantly up on that line item for all the fuels? Yeah. Okay. So we haven't pre-bought or anything? Not yet, not unless I, we have not. Okay, uh, let me just see if I can do one thing. Well, of course, the difference is pre buying we pre-bought for this winter. This is talking about next winter. Yeah. yeah, so. All right. So just look at this number right Maybe here. the anticipate is going to go down again. Which number? I want to draw your attention to this number and to this number, because I think I can increase this. I just want to see what happens. So say I pull that up to... Let's just say $25,000. Always need some nervous. Ready? Yeah, that brings you up to a 108% increase right there. Oops. That's hard to do. Unfortunately, probably closer to reality. Yeah. Let me bring it down. So that's your change. Right there and right there. Is it even possible to consider an alternative fuel source? Like wood heat for a wood chips or boiler all the systems you Yeah. It can't be added on. I mean like a, a pellet boiler works in conjunction with an oil. Uh, something to investigate. Investigate it. <coughs> kind of long term looking at things. Well, one of the ARPA things that I heard is that there may be something for municipal buildings, which we plan to look at. Okay. But I mean, it's not going to be an immediate fix. No, of course not. We'll do it for sure. But worth <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's your that's your dose of reality for right now. I just want to undo it though. <laughs> I don't want to mess with this. Um, I'd rather have Becky mess with it. Anyway, that's your bottom line for administration. That's the change. The reappraisal won't happen for a couple of years, right? Uh, trying to hold it off. Uh, I think we're at 91 and a half right now, if I'm not mistaken. And what's the lowest we can go? Uh, the lowest you can go, I believe, is 85. 85. And then you triggered one. And even then, we blew it off for trust your ears. I'm not. I think you're supposed to get one every 10 years, whether you need it yeah, or not. Yeah, sitting through for 80 appeals this year. Yeah, it's every 10 years unless you go below the 85% market value on your sales, and then you, you get triggered and you have to have one. So, so there's your uh, general revenue, your recap. So do you want so to keep going or do you well, want I just, no. I guess I'm a bit of a Scrooge, but I guess, I know it's not very much money, but I don't really see, I mean, what's the justification for increasing council stipends? And this is basically a community service volunteer job. <laughs> so I, I, I guess with everything we talk about, how expensive everything is for everyone to say that the council should get more money doesn't seem right to me. <laughs> but maybe Does anybody else want yeah. to talk about that? Not for the council? Yeah. Yeah. In 20 years, I've had one pay raise, one pay raise, and we, we can generate 10% of cost of living for everybody, but we're, we're paying, we're paying for fuel, uh, we're paying, when we get into an appeal process, we did 85 appeals during the last month, and we're driving all over the, all over the place, and, and I would think that $10 a meeting equates to Less than a thousand dollars a year. We just added a thousand one for just fuel for this building, mm -hmm. and and I, I think you look check the other towns, and we are, we're way behind. 
I guess I just have a different view of it that I can consider it public service that it's not I'm not it's not a job it's not an employee that I'm hired by the city to be an employee in that sense and um, I guess I just don't feel comfortable saying that I deserve more money just because I sit in my seat I don't know but that's just me I just see it differently we, I didn't, having... we didn't hesitate giving uh, non-union people ten thousand dollars a year just for cost of living but that's your we job. We didn't even, well, we're not I hesitated, employees. but the rest of you didn't. And now we're talking $1,000 for for five people mm -hmm. for a year. Uh, that's fine. And I think my time is worth $10 more over the last 10 years. But that's my opinion. Mm -hmm. You can agree to disagree. Mr. Mayor, can we ask questions now? Just a second. Thank you. I'm, I'm going through this. Let's see if this, does council have any questions? Um, any questions? Just, we can always ask at the next meeting, but yeah. just anything yeah. off the top. I mean, my initial take on the presentation is I agree, I'm not in, I, I, I'm getting done, but I've never been in this for the money. And I used to go all over the state and not get reimbursed and do things. I was never in it for the money. I was doing it for the public service as far as the council, that aspect. So, and I've been here all, well, be 26 years and I get done. Two pay raises, yeah. Yeah, we've only, so I have to, you know, to me it's just the principle of it. Um, that's just the way I look at that. Um, as far as, well, I have to wait for the zoning to see the justification, because I can tell you my initial take would be no on the increase right now. 13,000. You know, um, to increase the hours. My only reasoning is, you know, to increase the zoning to, to 32 hours. I just don't see it. That's just my initial take without any, uh, information behind it I just on that aspect and then on some of the other stuff I'm gonna have to think on it um, you had a question um yeah it's just some some points of clarification I noticed the salary in the city manager's office is only uh, proposed to be about 54,000. So I know that somewhere else, since there's at least two people in the city manager's office, there's more salary. Where is it? It's in the enterprise funds. It's in the enterprise funds? It, where is that? That's the water and sewer. I can't hear. Enterprise. I, I, I'm sorry? Enterprise. Where is it? I didn't see a it's sentence. The water and sewer. Water and sewer. Ah, so how much of the city manager's office is in the enterprise fund? Uh, it's about uh, nine thousand. Nine thousand. Let me just get this accurately for you. Give me a second. There. Thanks for that. 40% uh, of our salary is in this budget, 35% is in sewer, and 25% is in water. Sorry, 35% in sewer? Is in sewer, and how much? 25% in water. That would be 60%, right? And 40% is here. 
and 40% is in the city manager's office. So you're saying that you're, you do 60% of your work for water and sewage and only 40% for um, the, the city manage, managing the whole city? Those are the exact same proportions that the previous city manager had, and I've not changed them. When did that first come into effect, that 60% um, of your salary was in the water and sewage? It's been that way for years. I was under Ken Magoon, it was under John Ward. It's just how it was allocated. And, and if, if you do an hourly, if you did an hourly uh, each week or so, you're telling me that, that the city manager manages 60% of her time, 60% of her time goes to water and sewage and only 40% goes to the entire rest of your management? Our, our jobs are so fluid and uh, multi-dimensional that we go from one thing to the next to the next effort. I mean, it's part of what we do. There's so much incoming that's happening here at any given time that yeah, I think that these are quite accurate. Could uh, well, I, I would I would ask you the uh, council to consider getting more of a breakdown of that because that sounds to me like a huge, a, a huge. Let me get it to sound loud. It doesn't come from Brooklyn. Huge uh, amount that's being spent uh, uh, allocated to water and sewage there. Now, uh, next thing I wanted to ask about was. Um, the city treasurer's um, department. Um, as I recall, a couple of years ago was the first time that any of your salaries got allocated to the enterprise fund, the water and sewerage fund. Um, what was the percentage uh, that was allocated at that time um, from the city uh, clerk's office, or the city treasurer's office, to water and sewerage then? 15. 15. Yeah. And, and since then, that's not enough. I can tell you that right now. And what kind of analysis did you make to raise it to 25%? I explained that earlier. Because I'm we, sorry? We bill four times a year. We have to collect the funds, and we're answering water and sewer questions every day of the week. And you would say of, um, of your division of labor, how much goes to the tax um, collection and the tax billing? Well, we collect tax money twice a year, we bill once. Yeah, would you say that's 50% of your of what you guys do in the Treasury and City Clerk's well, office? Well, I would say it's probably, if truth be known, probably water and sewer should be about 35% and the tax the other. The other time we spent on recordings and public records and, and all of those elections and all that stuff. I'm sorry, public records and what else? The elections. But um, by the way, the, the billing that comes to you, um, I'm sorry, how do you get the information about, let's say, what my water bill is? Well, you go out and read the meters and. But and you don't. Your division doesn't go out and read the meters. The water and sewage people do that, right? That's right. And then how do and do they fill it into a computer program that you receive the no, amount that we, I owe? We fill it into the computer program. You fill it into the computer program. Yeah. So the, what do they give you? They just bring us a number. They bring another gallon you and we put it all in. Okay. And so when you originally estimated fifteen percent, what did you base that on? That was a guesstimate at the time to get the budget balanced in my department. Um, but, and how much then um, of the salary would be recorded as in the enterprise fund now? The what? How much, uh, let's say for 25%. salary, 25% of what? Of the 61? That, that, sal that salary line. Of the 62,000? Uh, is that what it's showing here? Well, it's 61,998. That 61,998 is after the 25%. After the 25%. Should be. Okay. 
Um, and where did the assessor um, salary, which shows is zero right now, wind up? I wasn't clear. Under tax listings, is it somewhere else? It's there. Oh, is it under professional expense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So he doesn't get a salary anymore? He gets a professional expense? He provides an invoice, and we book it to that line item. I'm sorry. Uh, he provides an invoice. Does that mean he doesn't get... Social Security or any of those benefits? Correct. And how, how come the planning, oh, I think I have one more back on this page. How, how come the planning and zoning salary has gone up 28%? That's because they're proposing the increase. I'm she, sorry? She explained it. Oh, that's, the, that's the, the extra eight hours a week? The extra eight hours. And with respect to the municipal building, the salary has gone up 13.28%. And everywhere else before, the salary increase was more like 8.79%. So I'm just curious why the salary there is about 5% more in increase. We're going through union negotiations. We don't know what it's going to end up being, so we aimed high. That's the union. He's union. Um, and the last thing is I, I'd ask for myself and for others who may not have had an opportunity to look at this budget um, to be able to ask more questions from administration uh, later on because, you know, it's only fair that if they didn't get a chance to really do this, if they want to come in and ask more questions, they should be able to I'll still ask them more. I'll consider it. Okay, thank you. Um, Ms. Dolgan, in your letter introducing the budget, you speak about moving the amount from the city clerk and the treasurer's office, and your statement is this budget shifted 25% of salaries to be absorbed into the enterprise fund. So when I read that, I'm hearing that you moved an additional 25% from last year, last year's budget into... I think it's been explained. He has, no. he well, explained last year it. was 15, this year's is 25. But what I'm saying is, I, I understand, Mr. Johnson, I, under, I listened closely. Okay, I'm glad. But her letter says that she's shifting 25%, and so I'm trying to make a determination whether the calculations that were done in Ms. Dolgan's office result in a total of 25% or 40%. Because mm -hmm. if you're saying they had been 15 and she's shifting 25, that would be 40. So I'm trying to ask her to clarify what is actually taking place. Well, I believe it was 25, but I'm going to double check that. My understanding is you increased it by 10%, 10%. as I sat through your initial it conversation. 15, it's now 25. I would like to hear from Ms. Dolgan, because she's the one who actually crunched the numbers, and her letter is not lining up with that, so I just want to make sure. have to get back to you at the next meeting on that because I'll, I'll double check with uh, Becky. Okay. And so I need the answer to that question to be able to ask the follow-up question because the city treasurer's office and the clerk's office is showing a negative 5.66%. However, whatever percentage has now been moved over to sewer should that should be showing up in that box as the negative number if it's level funded. Do you see what I'm saying? So the fact that it's a negative 5.66%, if 25% was shifted, that would actually be a net increase to the taxpayer of 20% because they're going to get it on the water and sewer bill if they don't get it on their their property tax bill. So once we know what the percentage is, then we can probably 
make more sense out of that negative number and what actual net increase to the taxpayer it represents. Clearly, I'm scrutinizing the assessor's category. Um, first of all, he was appointed by the city council, and yet he is not being paid as an individual. He's being paid as a contractor vendor. And, and he submits bills, the invoices, to the town. He actually bills for his employees on occasion. Um, and yet the city does not have a contract with him. And I think that's hugely problematic. Um, I also became aware after- Jennifer, the, excuse me, could you tell me why that's problematic? Can you put language on that, please? Because I think whenever you are, are contracting with an individual for services, it's very important that you have a contract that spells out the terms and conditions of the services that are to be rendered to the town. Right now, I have yet to find out whether or not Mr. Naramore is expected to work in the office during the hours that are held out to the public as the assessor's office hours. And for two Mondays running, he has not been in the office for those hours. On, on Monday the 7th, he didn't come in at all. And on Monday the 14th, he came in at noon, and he was gone by 1.42 when I called. If he had a contract that said that he needed to work during the hours that are the hours held out to the public for office hours, you would have some legal traction to hold him accountable. Without a contract, it's completely loosey-goosey. And he can be seen, it appears, he can come and go as he wishes. And you, Ms. Dogan, commented and said that he works erratic hours because it's a slow season right now. So that just confirms the loosey-goosey nature of this arrangement. And I do not think that serves the town well, and I do not think that that serves the taxpayer as well. Well, once again, I would say that we pay for the hours that he actually works, and he also has to do field visits during the hours that he works here. So whether or not he's in the office or whether he was or wasn't here on the dates that you claim, uh, I don't remember him not coming into the office on a Monday, but I do know that he has field visits to do. So it may have been that the time that you called was when he was out. If I'm not going to debate that. I'm not going to get into this right now. No, I'm okay? not I am not. I was also looking over the invoices, realized that Mr. Naramore raised his rates back in July of this past year. I'm uncertain if the city council is even aware that he raised his rates. I was told by Ms. Dolgan that it was approved at the same time the budget was approved, but I can't find it in any of the council meetings, minutes, that the city council is aware that he raised his rates. I don't think the city council probably is aware that he bills for somebody named Raven. I am. Okay. I've signed the warrants, and so okay. I know that. That's, That's someone who works in this office. Right. And but, so he has to bill for that individual working if they're doing city of Newport time. But. Mr. Mayor, with all due respect, you didn't appoint Raven. No, but if it's an employee in the... Uh, I'm not going to argue semantics. We're getting too into semantics here. Uh, no, let me finish. That is an employee in his office. So if I was appointed to do something and I had an employee who had to do some of it, you bill for it. But It'd be just like going to your doctor's office. They actually bill if you don't even see your doctor. You see the nurse practitioner. You get billed as if you see whatever. So... With the, he's billing for the person who was doing some work for the city, right? Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, it's full disclosure on those invoices. But Everything he is, is billing under a company name. Yeah. 
and you folks were under the impression that he was appointed as an individual. If he is billing under a con company name, he is a contracted vendor, and, the, and there should be a contract with the city of Newport, and there is not. And I am curious as to why his salary is effectively going to go up by 24%. He's not here tonight. I don't believe that he's had an increase uh, at all from the time that he started in 2019 till July 1st of this year. That's number one to consider. And we've uh, proposed this to the same level uh, as everyone else. What do you so mean by everyone else? I, I, uh, I don't have a reason to not increase that commensurately with what others are getting. What do you mean by others? By everybody else who works at the city, I guess. So are you equating it to the non-union employees raised? Yes, I am. But he is not an employee. He is a contracted vendor. I understand that. And his expenses are going up the same as everybody else's, right? So he's got fuel increased. He's got his own overhead increased. We don't want to lose someone who is trained and that we've invested in over the past three and a half years. When I have examined this Dogen, his... Oh, well, okay, I, that's enough. <coughs> I, I think, I no, 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 it's council, enough. It's enough. It's council. enough. No, you... No, it's, it's, it's enough. It's enough. The city council needs to look at his invoices. Every single hour is an even number. Every <coughs> single one. If you are truly logging your time... You do not end up with every single hour being an even number. I, I, I'm not going to get cross-examined anymore. No, And I, I'm assuming if you um, are an attorney that you're also doing the same thing. There, you're charging your clients a set rate. I'm not practicing law. I'm a school teacher. Oh. Um, Under the fuel oil, I was curious, you said, Ms. Logan, that you hadn't heard from the oil company, the oil distributor, um, about a pre-buy, but did anybody in your office try to call out to them or to other companies to see what pre-buys existed? We have not had time to do that. I'm waiting for Mr. Johnson to get another tape.
Oops, sorry, I'm just doing some kind of thing. Okay. So, for the next meeting, we'll just go right down the line. We'll do the police, probably police and fire. Mm -hmm. And then after that, public works and recreation. Mm -hmm. And then if we have time that night, we could either do other in capital. If not, we can. Are you saying? Because, well, we have until, we have really until the first meeting of January. Yeah. Because we got to make sure everything's finalized and ready to go to the printer. Right. So the next meeting would be December 5th. Are you saying, do you want to try all of those in the next meeting? Or do you want Well, we could, well, we'll see how we go. We'll, we'll just, I mean, we could put everyone down okay. and if we don't go through it we'll go to the next meeting okay just to keep it because that way we don't want to lock ourselves in if we get police and fire done and we could do public works okay so we'll just plan on doing city departments which you can list out police fire public works and rec Got it. okay So that'll be for the next meeting. Okay, move on. Mr. Johnson, new business. No. Mr. Shaman. No. Mr. Wilson. No. Any new business? Well, it's not business, but I just want to say Turkey Fest was fun um, on the weekend. And I, full transparency, I'm very, very thankful that being able to put balls in the milk jug or rings over the turkey legs is not criteria to be eligible for the city council because I failed at both of them <laughs> terribly so but it was fun it was a nice little event yeah it was okay. any new business no thank you okay mr. Johnson old business no mr. Sharma no mr. Wilson no I don't have any any nope. old business any old business no, thanks. okay so next meeting is Monday December 5th 2022 6 30 p.m.